I'm Lizzie Harrison for Card Player TV here with Sam Farha. How's it going, Sam? Today it's uh, it's been a bad day today. I just got knocked out at the WPT event. But there's more action and to find uh, at Bellagio. There's all. I'm always in action. This, I'm <laughs> not worried about the action. It's uh, you know you look forward when you have a lot of chips and right. uh, you think you're gonna do well and then all of a sudden you just get knocked out in a hand and it can be startling. It's frustrating, yeah. But now you can go down and play in a cash game. Yeah, I guess. So I brought you up here today to talk about cash games. I wanted to ask you, when you sit down at a game, how do you select, how do you figure out that it's a good game? What factors go into you deciding what you want to play, who you want to play with, and the mix of games that you're going to play? Well, Liz, I give a lot of action. Players don't want to play with me. <laughs> so they pick their games, they compromise, we negotiate the games. Mm -hmm. So I like certain games, like Butt Limit Omaha, and they like the, some other games. And we negotiate on them, and we decide to play like four games, and we, it's a great game for me because I can play any game, really. really? But they think I'm weak in, in limit games. So why do you like Pot Limit Omaha so much? Pot Limit Omaha, I think it's the best poker game because uh, you, can, you can always protect your hand. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of bluffs in it. And on every street, like you see the flop, who knows before the flop who has the best hand? Right. On the flop, you know where you're at. On the turn, it, ch it might change again. You can outplay your opponent if you know what he has. On the river, the same thing. So there's so many, so much poker into it. Right. When you play limit games, I mean, you look at the pot, there's a lot of money in it. Mm -hmm. Then we call them unit. We call chips unit. Okay. So it's going to cost you three or five units or whatever the, how high you play in. And uh, of course you're going to chase. You can have four out or you're going to chase. One out or you will chase. And you're going to have some bad beats in it. Right. You can and lose a lot of bets. Exactly. And pot limits, you can avoid all these bad beats. Of course you're going to get them sometimes, <laughs> but, but you minimize the, 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 the math, I guess. When right. You, because you always have one player against you, maybe two players. In limit games, you're, they're all involved in the hand, most of them. So what kinds of weaknesses do other players have at PLO? What do you spot at the tables? Playing against me. <laughs> 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 no. Uh, well, a lot of people sit with a lot of money and they get scared. Mm -hmm. They're trying to wait for the right hand. And when they come in, you can put them more. You can read them more than other players. All right. They're playing with scared money. They're, they're, uh, they're not scared. They're uh, conservative. Okay. They're playing hard to win. Mm -hmm. And they know I'm going so aggressive on the table, so they wait for the right hand to go against me. Well, I know a lot of internet players are in town. We have the World Series of Poker going on, the Bellagio Cup. Have they been trying to play PLO with you in Bobby's room? Yeah, there's one of them, this young guy, and he's been killing me, really. Oh, really? I mean, uh, you know, as poker got so, I don't know if it's easier or not, but people learn it so fast now. Yeah. because People of are all good. The <laughs> they're really good. And these young guys are really rough, and they're fearless. They really have, I mean, they put all their money on a draw, <laughs> one card coming, and they get there. They hit every single time. So it's really getting rough playing with them. So it wasn't like that when you started playing? When did you start playing poker? What was like the first poker game you played? It wasn't like this. It wasn't like this. I was doing it to them at that time. <laughs> now they're doing it to you me. You were the young guy coming up and there making go. everybody angry? There you go. And now they're doing it to me. But I used to do it with a different style. You know, I mean, when I put my money in, I wouldn't go all in. Mm -hmm. If you're all in and you put me all in, it makes no sense to put all my money and I'm on a draw. Right. Because you, you have to figure your math. I mean, I have nothing. I'm on a draw. Anything beats me. So you favorite at least two to one against me. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't do that. Any anytime you put me all in, I'm on a draw, I'll mark my hand. I'll try to make money off you. You know, if I make my hand, I want to bet you some more. If I can't bet you some more, makes no sense to play the hand. So why do you think that the play has shifted? Why do you think players are more aggressive now than they seem to have ever been? They're fearless. They made the, their money on the internet so fast. I don't know how. I never play on the internet. <laughs> they make it so fast. They're winning so much money. Mm -hmm. And uh, But that has, that has to have a lot of fluctuations. I mean, they could be broke next month. It's true. And I'm coming to this. Well, I mean, I played with an internet player last year. Right. He was winning so much money. He was the biggest winner on the internet. He went yeah. broke. He did. The same trip. I don't want to mention names. We won't mention but names. He, yeah, yeah, you probably know. <laughs> I know. He, 
he was so big all over the magazines, all over the cover, he busted this and this, and I broke. So how important is bankroll management? How do you manage your money so you make sure it's you always experience. stay in action? Is it's experience? experience through life. Young guys, with all my respect, they play great. Some of them are smart. Mm -hmm. Most of them are smart. Right. But gambling, if you don't manage yourself, if you, have, if you go on a bad streak, you might mismanage yourself. Mm -hmm. See, they made it so fast, they will lose it so fast also. So if you're losing and at the poker table, will you get up? Me? Yes. No. <laughs> But most people should. They should. And I should. <laughs> I, 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 I could be the worst money management on earth because I'm always hoping they always pay me off. Right. So no matter what happens, if my luck changes a little bit, I will get my money back or I will win a lot because everyone on the table will pay me off. I've so also, I keep taking my chances. <laughs> I've also heard that when you're at the table, you take a bad beat. It doesn't affect your play that much because you're always pretty aggressive. How do you avoid tilting? Or do you tilt? Was I wrong? I, if I went a hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's I how you get off I tilt? slow down. <laughs> it's, uh, well, I play a lot of hands, like you said. Mm -hmm. As long as I put a lot of money and I win one hand, I'll get him back so fast. You know, and, uh, but if, you run, if I run bad, like the other day, two days ago, I couldn't win a hand. Right. I, went with the, I played with this young internet player. Who was it? Tom Dirk. Okay. <laughs> he kicked my <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, we put the money in. I have the best hand. Hey, he gets on the river. Right. So you were playing well. You just weren't getting lucky. You need your hands have to hold up. It's true. It's true. I was running so bad. But money management. If you want to manage your money, I should have quit. Right. Especially against him. He be, He's the only one beats me in the game. And normally, I mean, it doesn't matter how good he is or how bad he is. He's a great player, by the way. Right. He's very smart. I, I like him. But, He's a nice uh, guy. yeah, I don't like him taking my money, though. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about moving up in limits. Say a player is winning consistently at 25, 50, no limit. When is it the right time for them to move up to a bigger when, game? When he builds his bankroll. Just building your bankroll? On, yeah. I mean, if you feel. Anytime you want to go up in a game, you have to be comfortable. You have to have the confidence. All right. That. This money, if you lose, any time I walk in into a casino, let's say I have $50 in my pocket. Right. And if I lose the 50, it's going to bother me. I shouldn't walk in. It's very so, true. Exactly. So they have to know their limits. If it's going to bother you, don't gamble. And if it's not going to affect you, hey, I mean, like I walk in, if I lose whatever amount, I'm fine with it. Because mm -hmm. it's not going to break me. I can come right. back the second trip and get it back. But if I bring all the money in, you can be done. And that's why they go broke, all these young guys. They bring their whole bankroll out. They're fearless, and they, hey, get more markers, 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 and you never know. I've seen it happen. Absolutely. So how quickly did you move up in the limits? What, what levels did you start playing? How old were you? What games and stakes did you start out at? I played, I always made my money through Omaha. Hold'em wasn't good. I okay. mean, I had a lot of friends played Hold'em for a living. They couldn't survive. Because it, there is no action in it. Right. And it's a scary game to play it high. There's so much luck involved. Nobody plays it that high. Yeah. Now it's popular. A lot of people play it, and they play it high. But it won't last for a long time. You don't think so? People's going to go broke sooner or later. It's a tough game to make a living. But so Omaha, I made, you can make a living at? Well, I made my money through playing Omaha because there's so much action. It's easier to, well, you have to read your opponent. You have to be good at the game. Read mm -hmm. your opponent. Uh, you have to have your own strategy. See, I built my image through the years, and people used to line up. They all want to play with me because I give uh, a lot of action. I mean, right. but they never put me on a hand, and that's their problem. So that's why you built your image in that way? I know where they're at, and I can get away from certain hands. They can't because they have no clue where I'm at. How do they you decide when to get away from a hand? What goes into that? Because I know the players. If I don't know you, you're aggressive, mm -hmm. I'll play different with you. But all these old players we used to play against, they play by the book. I never play by the book. I play the person. You I had your their, own book. I play their <laughs> cards. I don't look at my cards. So if I think they missed the, the flop, I take advantage out of it. Right. That makes sense. And yeah. you know how to get away if you can see they have a good hand. Exactly. If they come on top, hey, I'll mark my hand. It's easy to get away with it. That but for sense. them, for them, they go, they rather go all in with me. And when they go all in, I have the best out of it. So you think that Omaha will be the game that endures in years of to course, come? Of course. It's 
all the money, all the action is in Omaha. There's no other games. Limit games. If you want to do poker for a living, if you want to be a professional poker player, you have to play other games. Right. Limit games, you can't be very successful in them. Unless you're satisfied. It depends on your lifestyle. If you're satisfied with certain amount, you can do it. Right. Tell me, what's your lifestyle like? I'm greedy. <laughs> Pretty expensive, my lifestyle, so you have to win take a lot. some risk to get there. Exactly. Well, thanks so much for coming up today, Sam. Well, that's great. Lizzie Harrison with Sammy Farha for CarPlayer TV.